So what's going on, guys? So I have a very encouraging word for you. I was reflecting today on what is going on around us. I've been posting some recent videos about that. And as part of that, the devil is laughing at a lot of us. And it's because of uh, the unity or the lack of unity we have. And if you think about what's going on in the world, there's a lot of race versus race. You got white versus black. You got any race versus that race. You got gender versus gender. You got male versus female versus everybody else. You have class wars, uh, rich and poor, and all the Wall Street you know, movements. You have religion, you know, this religion versus that religion, this denomination versus that denomination. You got vaccinated, unvaccinated. You got all these different things going on in the world. And a lot of it, I believe, is... Uh, obviously from the devil, but uh, fabricated in some sense to drive a certain message, to drive a story, to drive propaganda, to get people to be amped up and riled up by the new news of you know, this lawsuit or that court case or of that event or whatever it is, right? From you know child stuff to gun stuff to everything and anything you can think of. And the problem we have right now is that we have this lack of unity. And there's a saying that you know, goes around that is just kind of ringing in my ear. Divided we are weak, united we are strong. And so uh, if you think about it from a Christian perspective, I was reminded of Ephesians 4. And in Ephesians 4, it talks about in verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you are called with all low, lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in, in you all. And so a lot of us right now, we have that in mind, but we ignore that because we don't do that with the perspective of you know, gentleness, of love, long-suffering, and bearing with, with one another. And we're in a process right now where there's a great shaking there's a lot of people that are waking up, but at the same time, we're trying to figure it out. And we're in this process of looking at something objectively. And I'm here to encourage people to look at something objectively. If something, a piece of news, if something that went on in the world is thrown at you, if you look at it from the devil's perspective, he loves it. He's laughing at people just because they're looking at, you know, race versus race or, you know, gender versus gender, whatever it is. And 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 he he's pushing that he's instilling that and it's so engraved in people that they're trying to you know bash somebody else they're yelling at something else and really what's being ignored is the truth right and further on in this in this uh, chapter in verse 25 it says therefore put away lying put putting away lying therefore putting away lying let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. And right there, it's talking about what you've got to be doing. First and foremost, put away lying. So what does that mean except that you want to, as a Christian, find out what the truth is? And so whether that is about you know, all these things going on in the world, about the truth behind an event or a circumstance, the health stuff, uh, racial stuff, you know, cases uh, between people, ideologies, theologies, uh, viewpoints on different things. You got everybody and, ev and anybody pitting people against each other. Everything from the world stuff all the way to the church stuff. And before this, in verse 11, he talks about this. He talks about how there's a lot of us, we need to strive for this unity of faith. And I'm going to touch on some things that might trigger people, but it's talking about the fivefold ministry, uh, verse 11. And then it goes on to some other stuff. And so let me read it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be be children tossed to and fro and carried up uh, about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the uh, cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow up grow up in all things into him who is the head christ from whom the whole body the whole, uh, whole body joined and knit together 
by what every joint supplies according to the effective working of every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so I said a lot there, but what you got to look at is first the foundation in Christ, who is the head. And then from there, everybody has a different part in the body. And I'm not here to give some lecture on the fivefold ministry, but because God gave everybody some portion, some role. And in this time, if you're not looking at it, if you're not looking at it from the perspective of God is shaking, he's giving people a chance to repent, a chance to come to a truth, an understanding, a growth process to hash things out, to be able to learn about something and to, in love, bear with each other in keeping this unity. And to be able to get to that unity, we have to be able to understand truth. You have to be able to grow, not to be tossed to and fro by you know every wind of doctrine, to get rid of bad doctrine, false doctrine, false things, and to stand up to what is the truth, what is actually going on. Is something a conspiracy? Is something false? Is something this and that? The only way you can really do that is to get on your knees, pray, have a relationship, to call out, the, uh, to, to ca- cry out to the Lord. And then from there, to try to uh, deal with your character, your perspective, and in Christ-likeness, to go out there with the gift, with the, the role, with the spiritual uh, gifts that you have to go out and do that ministry. And then from there, we can proceed towards unity. But if you keep looking at things from, you know, oh man, that news or this thing or this race or that, you know, gender or this piece of, you know, health, uh, COVID or whatever it is that people are looking at and you divide and yell at each other, my perspective is right. And with your pride and with your lying anger, do not be do be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath is what it's saying. But because the devil is laughing and we're giving place to him, but it says, do not give place to the devil, but we're doing that. And so if you're not, if you're not recognizing that in this hour, then I urge you, I ask you to be uh, in a humble attitude before the Father, to come before Him, ask Him what the truth is, and then to be able to go out in your growth, in your, in your sanctification process, to be able to figure this out. And then as a body, we can move to unity. And a lot of people are in this camp. I'm, uh, I'm of the camp of Chloe. I'm of the uh, camp of Apollos. And I'm of the camp of Paul or whatever it is. But Christ... God is wanting us to get together. And so, if anything, it's a recognition in this time of what's going on to be able to uh, step back and say, you know what, I don't want to let my anger anger go down, sun to go down on on my wrath. And to be able to do this with gentleness, uh, lowliness, long-suffering, and to uh, bear with one another in love. In love, we got to do this. And so, again, guys, it's a reminder. It's a, a, a desire, my desire, as well as I'm sure many of you, if you guys agree, at least to the biblical principle. But the question is, what is it that we're focusing on? What is truth? What is going on in the world? What is it that is good doctrine? What is false doctrine? And so to be able to go through that and wrestle with that on your own. So God bless you guys. And I hope this blessed you. And I'll talk to to you guys very soon.